Hello and welcome to a new vlog. In today's video we're going to be looking at this uh, Fluke 77. We're going to do a teardown and a repair because it uh, has a small problem. So let's get started on the teardown right here on my bench. So I got this Fluke 77 multimeter at a recent auction together with uh, other multimeters. It's in pretty good condition. It has a minor scratch on the LCD and someone just uh, engraved a couple of initials right here on the front which is a pity but uh, overall for a multimeter um, of its age it's in quite good condition and I also have the original holster which is uh, quite nice it has this uh, nice tilting bail it also has this clip which you can use to clip it onto something, uh, your belt or so something else. It looks quite rugged like all Fluke multimeters, but let's take a look inside and see what we find inside. It's very common with uh, Fluke multimeters to get these uh, self-tappers, but as uh, Dave Jones from EV Blog mentioned in a recent uh, video, you practically never see any problems with these uh, with the threads of these screws in fluke multimeters. They probably just got the plastics right, just the uh, right step size on the screws, so they never wear out. And this is how the fluke 77 looks inside. We can see the high precision network here. We have the HRC fuse, this is for the 10 amp range and the small glass fuse for the uh, 300 milliamp uh, range. And right here we have the battery terminals soldered right on the PCB and you go in with a 9 volt battery. It's a very nice arrangement because these look very solid unlike those uh, leaded pigtails for 9 volt batteries, those can, can break any time. Very simple construction, uh, through hole construction, and we probably have the microcontroller right here. We can see through this uh, opening, we have the surface mount microcontroller on the other side of this board. It's not the first time I'm opening this meter, that's why I knew it had a problem. Because if we look right here on this varistor, we can see it's a very um, interesting type of varistor with this slot opening right in the middle you can see we have another one right here and it has this very thin slot right in the middle of the varistor and I believe that is a spark gap I've never seen uh, this type of varistor before but as we can see this one did its job in protecting this meter probably when a high voltage uh, signal was applied to the volts input of this meter a spark was produced in this uh, spark gap and probably the varistor network clamped that voltage to ground and protected the meter because everything works on this meter. Even this varistor is not dead but since it uh, survived this shock I would like to replace it just to be on the safe side. So I downloaded the service manual for this uh, fluke multimeter and we can see let me put the meter beside. We have right here these two varistors, which are right here on the PCB, and the third one here, which is this one. And if we take a look at the schematic of this uh, multimeter, we can see at the volts input, we have R1, which is a 1K fusible resistor, and this, this one right here, this big resistor, and then to ground we have in series two of these uh, 910 volts varistors which uh, will clamp any voltage to ground because a varistor is an electronic component that uh, changes its internal resistance based on the applied voltage so as the voltage goes up its resistance goes low clamping uh, any voltage uh, higher than its rated voltage to ground and they've used uh, two in series to increase the uh, clamping voltage level. 
and unfortunately this one right here which is the second one actually connected to ground um, suffered some damage but it managed to protect the rest of the circuit the service manual also gives you the part number for that particular varistor and we can see it's uh, 910 volts at 1 milliamp and we also get the part number but I wasn't able to find any info on this particular part number it's probably outdated because this meter I don't know it's probably something uh, manufactured something in the 80s so this part number is most likely obsolete but I was able to find uh, something close with um, Farnell and it's uh, a varistor from Panasonic it's also 910 volts at uh, 1 milliamp but it's slightly bigger than the original one as we can see quite a bit of difference in size compared to the original one probably two times thicker but uh, there is enough space in here to fit this new varistor so we're going to go ahead with, with the repair and replace the damaged varistor but before we do that let's continue with uh, the teardown I can see there is a screw right under the HRC fuse so I need to remove the fuse I can feel some a spring contact somewhere in there so we have this very nice spring connecting this uh, foil shield on the back of the meter to the uh, common ground we have two uh, surface mount chips one right here that we could see through this opening and it's marked uh, fluke this is uh, probably the one doing the uh, actual measurements and it's probably a custom ASIC designed by Fluke and we have another one um, right under the LCD and it's quite simple to understand what this one does it probably is the LCD driver other than that all components are surface mount and we can see there are also a couple of uh, resistors and capacitors under the LCD it's quite nice the LCD has these screw mounts because with uh, modern multimeters even the Fluke 87 um, the LCD is mounted with plastic clips to the uh, actual PCB and that is not as uh, reliable those plastic clips uh, can break if you try to open the LCD for example to repair the zebra strip so yeah that's about it uh, quite a simple construction and I very much like the uh, buzzer on the back panel the buzzer actually uses a couple of uh, contacts and these are the soft silicon carbon type uh, contacts that you see on keypads for example and uh, these two are positioned such as to touch a couple of uh, pads on the PCB very very nice uh, construction considering how old it is so uh, let's get started with the uh, repair video first I'm going to desolder this uh, damaged varistor and then I'm going to solder in the new one so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, apply a bit more solder to these uh, solder joints just to make them um, just a bit more uh, liquid so the solder pump can uh, grab the solder much easier I think it's uh, probably visible on camera but the actual leads are bent outwards so uh, it will be difficult to extract the part I will have to straighten the, the leads before trying to pull the part away from the PCB and just by using this uh, T-type iron soldering tip you can see I can almost touch both of the solder joints at the same time and there is no need to suck the solder off I can just touch both of the solder joints and pull the part off this is the advantage of uh, using a larger soldering iron tip so I'm going to try to do exactly that
and it worked. I managed to get the barista off. Now I need to do a bit of uh, cleaning on the solder joints just to free up the, the holes for the new varistor. A varistor does not have uh, polarity, it works both ways, so it doesn't matter which way you mount it. Let me do a quick check with the front plate of the multimeter just to see if the varistor doesn't touch anything. Yeah, I think it's it just clears the the cover on this uh, front plate. Now we're going to cut the excess leads away. a bit of uh, cleaning I don't want to leave that flux residue on the PCB all right now we have a nice and uh, clean solder joint so we can put the meter back together And there you have it, the meter has been repaired, let me just uh, place it back in its holster. One thing I like about this meter is the very crisp LCD display, I mean the angles are very good on this uh, LCD display and you can pretty much see how crisp it is from any angle. Just to verify that uh, the repair job was a success. I have uh, both of these meters connected to my AC socket measuring uh, AC voltage and they pretty much agree on the measurement. So that was all for this uh, repair video. It was uh, quite easy to do and I'm happy with the result. I have a working Fluke 77 meter which is a reliable and trusty meter that I, I can put in my toolbox. I don't even know, I guess we can call this one a, a vintage multimeter, although it's not that old, it's the oldest out of the uh, multimeters that I have right here in my lab. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember that a thumbs up always helps and uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, maybe follow me on Twitter. See you next time.